whatever it was wrong wasn't even with the trouble oh did you hear that did you also hear yes. that yeah yeah let me uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. esta reunión está siendo grabada it was uh, this reunion is being recorded <laughs> you, so how's yeah, it going I, yeah good man good just uh in the studio working away doing, doing our thing you, you you have a nice lighting there <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've been investing in some uh, ambient lighting. We've got these horrible yellow bulbs that that kind of make everybody look pretty uh, awful. So we just thought we'd uh, we'd go to the local DIY store and bought. Dave went and splashed out a few Ooh. dollars on uh, some some uh, Christmas lighting, basically. <laughs> what was the reason? Do you have some free time, or <laughs> do you have some free time to work on your <laughs> studio? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, it is locked <laughs> like, like a free year or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, we you know we're not going on tour. We have to spend a lot of time here. We're just, uh, you know, trying to make it look like a like a kind of weird home, a home from and, home. And I just discovered that uh, the new album, Glowing in the Dark, which is uh, I already told you before, it, it's a piece of art. I, I just love it. I think it's your best album so far. Oh, thanks. Man. Um, I just realized that it was recorded a year ago. Like you were ready to, uh, <laughs> you, you, ready you fast to forward. Yeah, yeah, you fast forward the process to have an album out, and then uh, somebody in Wuhan decided decided to change things out, right? Exactly. Now nah, it was it was all kind of scheduled and such as life, you know. Uh, you get dealt a, a weird hand, but um, yeah, we're 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 kind of like writing and just trying to keep ourselves busy and getting a head start on new material and just trying to turn it into something that's not sitting around watching daytime tv and in your shorts <laughs> that's me that's it. are you blaming on me <laughs> are you blaming on me right now <laughs> is that you, is that you? <laughs> that's that's literally this is my sh I, I put on a jacket but um, this is like just boxers from the all oh, right now. i thought you were gonna say naked from the, from, <laughs> from the <lower> <laughs> naked and jerking <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was, nice jacket nice jacket <laughs> oh thank you very much nice jacket or yeah. nice jacking no just i'm nice, gonna nice stop jacket. with that joke <laughs> and I, I saw a very romantic way that Dave, uh, the drummer and, and co-founder of the band, has about uh, the pandemics and how the, the perception of people change. I, it was a great phrase that said, like, we were all running on a threat meal. And suddenly, if you, if you decided to stop, the threat meal would take you away. And suddenly the world stopped the threat meal. Mm. And, and you get to realize and do things better. Do you have that, that point of view about the the world as it is right now or do you think david's crazy he's dave's dave <laughs> uh yeah i think dave's had a kind of creative um you know uh streak and i think it just works for different people in different ways i know like a lot of mates who are like writers and if you've got kids and stuff it can really it can really mess with that flow that you're in you know you go to the studio every day and do stuff but i think it has been Like it has been in some ways, uh, in a perverse way, like interesting to see the mechanics of everything stop, just to see how the world kind of, kind of reacts, and people obviously get into, you know, trying to get into nature more and going back to some kind of ideal you might have had back in the day. But um, I suppose for us as music writers or songwriters you might say um even though it's a pandemic we can still come in here and create and write and that's our that's our that's our but a therapy i suppose like um how we can escape all that stuff going on inside you can come and write a song about something you know imagine yourself in a busy venue or in a busy street uh where everything's open and kind of write stuff around i'm not saying that all our music is going to be about um future music is going to be about like being clubs but um maybe it is i don't know <laughs> something like very pandemic like masking yeah, yeah. off you know it's how we go i'm clubbing yeah. right now it's, it's how like, we roll <laughs> it's like a vanilla sky but in a club sense it's just like you in the club by yourself um <laughs> dancing into the long hour 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, we're 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 yeah, it is a, it is kind of weird. Like all the normal things that you do, you know, you finish an album, you do the promo, you go out in the road, and that's all the kind of mechanics, and the whole industry's gone. Uh, what's happening? You know, like, and you have to kind of just react, and it, sometimes out of those little glitches and things that the curveballs that you get, kind of interesting stuff happens, and uh, yeah, you just kind of try to ride the wave, I suppose. You have you tried? Because uh, I ask uh, to the fans to send some questions to you, and I'll, I'll, read, I'll read some to you later. But um, one of the questions was uh, that. You, you're crazy live, like your, your sound live, it's amazing uh, you, as a visual thing and as an audio thing. And people was uh, asking about if there's going to be like a, like a video out of a full concert and maybe during the pandemic, it's a good way to do it. As a stand-up comedian, it fucking sucks for me because I cannot hear yeah. the laughs when I play a show. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It's, just but it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, like, like giving a show to and being deaf, you know? So yeah. you're talking and you see people like, You've just got the studio producer going. Yeah, yeah. Tap, yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. or someone like Great. fake clapping, like he was fucking friends or Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, you know, canned laughter, canned cheering, and, and, and like, say, you know, saying our name repeatedly. That we need to kind of filter that in there. Um, <laughs> you know, the saying that we're gods. That's the kind of stuff we need to be working on, on that background kind of What ambient voice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have any plans for for a uh, for a digital concert uh, now during the pandemics with with the new featurings you have and with the awesome sound you have and the maybe I don't want to say it, but maybe free time <laughs> yeah. uh, you have now? Yeah, there is there is something in the in the mix. Um, it's, um, you're also about sorry. You're also about to be ten years, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. As an active first, band, first, first album was out um, ten years ago. Next. Uh, in 2000, yeah, 2022 is our is our 10th anniversary. So yeah. That's that's another thing that, like, I suppose from a musician point of view, I don't really. That's not really my bag, but obviously you've got a label going. These, this is something like that's you got to do this. You know, this is this is this is big stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, it'll be good to kind of go back and maybe do like a, you know, a full retake of the first album and a kind of live setting. You know the way I, I went to see the Stooges play um, Funhouse um, <laughs> from 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 beginning to end, and it was like, whoa, this is like amazing. So yeah, maybe maybe doing that, but keep my top on. Oh, I went to see the Stooges, and the pubes of Iggy Pop were out all the concert. Although I can see the the, the, the gray pubes that the he had right. just it was it was just out. Like I was thinking, like the the dick of this guy is just about to pop out. Is, oh. we're, we're like a few seconds away. <laughs> it's like just on that line before the pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and some music journalist told me that he was going to interview him, so he was waiting for him at the camper, and Iggy came in and didn't realize that he was there. So Iggy took out uh, the jeans old-fashioned way, like he, he was, and he told me like he couldn't, he could see like the full. Iggy Pop, uh, like something we don't get to see. You don't really like, want it. What, yeah, yeah, like you know, Iggy's, Iggy's Butthole. Like that's maybe yeah. a, 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 a name for a hardcore punk band, like Iggy's, but, Iggy's Butthole. Um, Iggy's 70 year old butthole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> someone not, you don't want to go there. Luckily, I was at the back <laughs> of the auditorium, so I didn't really get that full frontal attack, you know, coming straight at me. I had a kind of a sense of perspective and overview not the not the full-on treatment so we're, we can wait for a digital concert can can we wait for that yeah yeah uh, that's gonna be i'm pretty sure that's gonna be happening i mean it's kind of one of these things that people are probably like you know it's getting to the it's getting on to a year now of this stuff and people just are sick of seeing uh acoustic sessions and uh digital concerts but you know we're kind of ha we haven't done a digital concert so we might as well get we might as well do one uh to kind of like sign off on all the protocol that you're meant to do in in you know coronavirus lockdown mode 
it would be amazing because you have these uh, amazing visuals all the time that they kind of, this is like a, I always hold it this question, but it's like a crazy fan question. And you know that I'm a fucking crazy fan. But um, there was, there's an interview uh, of a Mexican journalist with Dali where he, he talks in third person. He was like, Dali D's, Dali that and stuff. Mm -hmm. And at some point, uh, this guy asks him about LSD, hallucinogens, and stuff, how he, if he works uh, to use them. Mm -hmm. um, and the answer of Dali is like, no, 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 what, what, what are you thinking? Dali is always known because he doesn't use this, this type of thing. Like, I, I've, I've just saw the video of spirals and I honestly, I was thinking like, this is kind of a mushroom trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that your visual guy or is that your idea or how you come up with that or just, just, you're just crazy like Dali? We had, a, we had a video commissioner who had done a lot of, um, a lot of uh, class A's, as we call them, uh, in his time and, and a lot of uh, hallucinogens. And I think when we started talking about that stuff, he was seeing all these things. I mean, that's, I suppose we're from that, you know, we, we kind of were, you know, we've, we've gone to raves and we've, you know, done, we're from that kind of culture. And, you know, when you used to go to raves when you were kids, um, they would do these crazy visuals in the background and it would just really like take your mode that you were in to another level. You know, somebody yeah, yeah. be doing these live video mixing and it would just be like a really trance state that you'd go into, you know, if you were like at a club and you were dancing or whatever. Suppose that is like all that going through, you know, you come back from uh, a club and, you know, on the BBC or Channel 4, they would have, I think it was Channel 4, they would have like these electro, um, electro kind of videos from the late 70s early 80s and it was all these kind of film stock old stock you know put together in a really kind of trippy way and everybody kind of sit around on the sofa and just be slightly monged out so i suppose all that's there in terms of our musical experiences and we don't we i suppose we don't shy away from it too much um and we're always in the back of our head we're thinking about the live show and what how do how do you transport a kind of audience to a place that's slightly uh like not out of body but like another another kind of place in their mind um even even it, like it's not really about drugs either it's just about like you know if you have a dream and yeah yeah you, 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 you can, can have the just... trip you can be have the trippiest kind of dream and the next day you wake up and go shit i didn't even take anything but that was that was weird there was you know so i think it's all there we kind of play on that just because of our musical taste, I suppose. You, you say it's most like a like a like music experience stuff, like something to to remind you of your early years of like being a teenager and going to rapes. I was just going to ask you about that in the new album, like uh, tracks like "Glowing in the Dark." Glowing in the dark, 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 glowing in the dark. Spirals. Every part of the endless season is bleached. The art. It's something like, like a ravey, like a ravey thing. Do you have some yeah. rave, rave anecdotes, like, like any funny raving anecdotes when you were young and you used to play uh, in high school? High school I think I, I nearly, I, I nearly died uh, listening to Andrew Weatherall. I think he came to my hometown. Do you know Andrew Weatherall? Um, I'm so sorry, I don't know him. He's a. Uh, he did a, he, you know, um, Primal Scream, uh, Screamadelica. Yeah, now, now I feel like an idiot because people are going to be like, how you know, no, how, <laughs> how come you don't know him? <laughs> he, he, he died last year. He was this, um, it, it, was, it was an anniversary of his about a fortnight ago. Um, and he was like this hugely influential producer and uh, DJ and, remixer and everything and it was like the whole the all the internet was just like full of his um tributes you know because he was he was such an amazing person but it did it just took me back when i was looking at them he came to my hometown to this the worst shittiest pub 
that you've ever been in and it was out near an airport so it was just like nothing else around we were bussed <laughs> in and he played this set that was so good that i basically kind of collapsed you know uh like, uh, how, you know like, how you collapsed with I, like a yeah like just an, an embarrassing you know level you just felt like a tit because you got like had to be dragged off the dance floor like michael or, jackson stuff michael jackson it, stuff or just like a ah Or like a yeah. fainting, like a no, fainting no, no. Fat Michael it, Jackson fan stuff. It was just like because his music was just so good. Everybody was dancing, so it was really like it started really easy, and then it just got harder and harder and harder. And then everybody had this kind of false sense of like, just go for it. And then there was just people like dropping like flies, you know. And I, I was one of those flies. I I just kind of <laughs> collapsed, had to get dragged off the dance floor, and uh, bottles of water thrown over me resuscitated you know the the bouncers were all there telling me i think i might have said i'm gonna die or something <laughs> something really dramatic like that uh for music for a music thing for a music yeah. moment like i'm dying yeah, yeah. for music like i'm yeah, literally no. dying for music i'm dying tell my mother i love her uh you know <laughs> and then about 20 minutes later you're just you know drinking some kind of sugary drink and you're fine um so yeah that's, that, that's probably my probably one of my most embarrassing but also in a famed sense being next to almost a godlike figure he, he yeah that the, the dj nearly you know he didn't he didn't save my life he, he nearly killed me <laughs> musical music didn't save my life it almost killed me yeah That's good. like uh, uh, but you have like uh, lots of different sounds on the album i i, I heard the uh, the world will turn Which it sounds like it reminds me of the. Uh, sorry if I'm offending you with this one, but like the early Britney Spears. No, I'm, I'm fucking with you. No, like like the, <laughs> the the early Pink Floyd, like when Sid Barrett was in Pink Floyd. You know this psychedelic thing, mm, but mm. really acoustic, and some of the tracks had these. Uh, well, has have these uh, like. N nice music sound how can, how can i say it like uh easy easy listening music like it kind of reminds me of air were you thinking about all those kind of influences and i'm going again with this question uh the beach boys i can i can hear the the beach boys a lot in your songs yeah i suppose like i i weirdly was never a big fan of the beach boys but dave is um, I, i know you're more of a beatles guy right yeah yeah and i think the world will turn that was a song by jim And he kind of came in with it fully formed. It kind of sounds like it's one person's vision. You know, a lot of our songs, like somebody will start something and it'll be like, don't know what to do with that. Like, we're going to have to work on it, you know, and you kind of bash it into shape and unstrip it. And, you know, it's like a car. You're like, you know, you kind of strip it back and you rebuild it again and get it to a place where you feel like it could enter an album where sometimes there's a track like that you know world return where somebody just comes with a kind of fully formed and then you're like oh that's brilliant because it it just it doesn't need anything you know all it needs is like a bit of strings and it's all there so um yeah i suppose it's it's pastoral we might say it's a kind of like uh poignancy about it but then when you put that against something like glowing in the dark which is quite like ravey Sometimes it's difficult to balance them up, but if you do it in the right order, you can make it like a journey. So you got these quiet moments and then you kind of start building up and then you can drop something that's really hard. And I suppose we treat it like a mixtape. Um, and the fact that, you know, if somebody made a mixtape for you when you were a kid or whatever, they, they wouldn't just put in 12, you know, of the same, like 12 techno tracks. Or, you know, they would kind of make it meander and go quiet and then get crazy again if they put a lot of thought into it and we we kind of approach it a little bit like that in some ways and you and <laughs> also used to put on like some words in mixtape like there's that's something that that going away like i remember my, my mom used to he, she told me like your music is so good i need a mix a mixtape for exercise so i was literally as a kid putting like cassettes on my record player and making like, right. mixtapes And I had words for her, like, come on, mom, you can do it. You know, you know, you can do it. It's been a hard day, but yeah, you, you need a lot of stuff. Oh, oh really? <laughs> Just drop in, drop in those yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. motivational. Yeah, uh, yeah, I heard about another Mexican journalist who used to give you, gave you uh, mixtapes as, as, uh, as a birthday gift. 
with words like, man, it's another year for you. Yeah. 30 can be hard or 30 can be the new 20s, man, which is super nice. And I also saw mm -hmm. Dave talking about that in an interview, like all that shit is lost because you cannot say that with a Spotify uh, list. Audience. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You cannot just do this romantic thing. He was talking about this thing, like romantic movies, uh, find out where two characters that like, You, you've never seen a, a love movie where two characters met touching a Kindle or buying the same thing in Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I love this kind of album, which is literally an album that you have to listen from the first track to the last one. Sorry, I, I interrupted. It, it's it's, it's, cool. it's kind of like when you go and see uh, a classic uh, best man speech at a wedding. And it, uh, like, you know, the, like you always go, if you're writing one, there's always one where you like, drop in an occasional odd slide, slide into your slideshow that is really odd. You know, like maybe just a naked guy doing this, <laughs> like a naked bald guy. You know, so the I, first I, time I met Vinny, <laughs> I yeah, know, I know what exactly. you're saying, guys. Yeah. <laughs> But you're like, why did that get in there? And you, you're trying to forward it on. Um, it's a, you know, it's dropping in little moments into, in a similar way, like obviously not doing it in a comedy sense, but little moments that kind of keep people on their toes and you know there's little parts you know little instrumentation parts or like um a doorbell ringing like in this one yeah i love it uh, i love that yeah, song uh, um out. you know little moments the like that the like, clappings at the end yeah song. yeah so it's it's about trying to keep people engaged and kind of i suppose we treat it like a proper album like you're meant to listen to it from front to back and it take you through a bit of a story in a way But yeah, um, yeah, I've lost where I can't remember where I was. Yeah, so, yeah. so you work on it as, as, as a don't say a mixtape because like, there's no mixtapes anymore. But maybe like a, like a like a Spotify playlist that you can like uh, listen through it and go and go through. Yeah, it. yeah. I suppose it's a problem because we've got so many songs doing slightly different things. The way that's the way that's the way we have to treat it because if you've got like a folk track like the world will turn and then you've got like glowing in the dark which sounds like it's from a, a 90s rave or something you go right how do we get these two together on the same album we've got to put in tracks that you know kind of take you from there to there so it's it's almost like we have to do it like that just to keep keep it instead of sounding insane you know you could listen to like you can't just listen to like a slightly pastoral folk track and then go straight into uh You know, a buyer yeah, to, to a track like the like the Ark or something like yeah, that. Yeah, people will be like, you know, falling <laughs> off their chairs, kind of thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so no, it's it's all it's all part of the the process that we kind of have to do in a way. Great, great, great. I really, I really love love the album. There was another uh, uh, question that a fan made, which I found like related to this. Uh, maybe he's the song's term, but he he's asking me about this song that you thought it was just going to be like a regular song. Uh, maybe in the case of Glowing in the Dark or whatever your album on your discography and a track that was like the opposite like this is pure gold people's gonna love it and it's sadly for you it didn't happen like that and as a comedian I can say it, that you have this joke where you go like oh my god they're just gonna roll their asses off where I like where I'll take this joke away and you and you tell it and Nobody laughs. Nobody and laughs. You have the, yeah, yeah. And you have the slow punchline that you thought it was bullshit, and suddenly yeah, you can yeah, hear yeah, the yeah, audience yeah, yeah. going crazy. What did, do you have like a something uh, like that? Probably. Well, we wrote a track called Giant, which was on uh, the sec. It's a, it's the opening track on their on Born, Born Under on Saturn. Saturn. And I think somebody at the label Damn. said, um, "How does it feel they have written an anthemic, like a huge anthemic track?" And I was like, "Is it?" And they were like, yeah, this is, this is going to be huge, this track. And then it just really wasn't. And, uh, I, was, and then I think that, you know, that person left the label soon after because um, obviously they must have just been thinking, God, I've, I've completely lost touch of what's anthemic and what's not. Um, but yeah, there's, yeah there's, couple, there's, always, there's always tracks that you think that are going to, you know, uh, tracks that in your register don't really add up to much and then you look at the kind of views or you know if you're make if you're trying to put a, a set list together for your like live show you might look at how many people have viewed certain tracks and you know oh there's a lot of views on this track 
we should play that live because there's obviously a bit of a demand for it. Um, yeah, there's ones, there's kind of weird ones like um, there's a, the, on the same album, like a third track on that Born Under Saturn Found You, which didn't really, like, it wasn't a single or it wasn't anything, but like every time I go to a show, it was a track that I couldn't, I didn't really have much hand in, but everybody comes and goes, that's an amazing track. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, you know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. did, I didn't play I it. It's it. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just found a video about the, the emo culture and the... Uh, emo? The, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. remember emo? Emo, mm -hmm. uh, those were these kids. Yeah, yeah, those kids, yeah. Do you, do you have that, that time? Because it's funny to look back on some artists and be like, oh, you used to be an emo, man. Oh, come on. I, we just I found was, out you I used can, to be an emo. I can... I can Safely say, I was never an emo. Thank Christ. Yeah, um, into arts and stuff, right? I was too esoteric and obscure for that kind of stuff. No, I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> I think I did a, I did a, I did a thing where I looked like I was from the seventies. I look, I wanted to look like uh, Bjorn Born, you know, the yeah, yeah. Uh, Bjorn Borg or the the tennis player. Yeah, yeah. That was probably, that was probably my lowest fashion point. Uh, But I think that was quite on, you know, in vogue at the time. But you gotta, you know, you gotta roll with the punches. You've always gotta embarrass yourself at some, a few stages in your life. Oh well, I saw that this this guy. That, I don't know his name. I don't. I honestly, I'm not into Panic at the Disco. But there's a video of of, of the guy playing the the most famous track. I don't, I don't either know the freaking name, which is good for us to know it. I read scenes, not tragedies, and I saw a video of the guy like breaking off in a concert, like you during a rave, uh, yeah. and he he's just screaming like. I fucking hate this song. I'm tired of this bitch. It's just yelling how he hates the song. And then he starts playing it. Because there's no other way for him. Do you think, yeah. Do, do you have a song like that? Or do you think that at some point you will have a song like that? <laughs> I think Dave basically made a decision one day that we were never going to play default. Uh, again. Um, and he was like, all right. I don't want to play this anymore. Like we're gonna, we're gonna stop playing default just so you know. And I was like, right. But that, you know, that could go really badly because, like, that's you know probably a track that probably everybody, if anybody that knows us, that's how maybe they came in to knowing us. Yep. Um, and then I think we played, we did a show or a festival, and we didn't play it, and we got a phone call from our record boss the next day and going, I hit. He's a French guy, and he was just like, I heard you did not play default. And then we were like, uh, yeah, it was, it was Dave's decision. It was not mine. Uh, <laughs> I totally sold him was, down the river. He's the leader. I, I was just yeah. there. I was like, not I think, he's, I, I think I, he's, he's totally mad. Like, you know, I don't know what's going on in his head. But um, he was like, yeah, it was Dave's, Dave's decision. Um, but, you know, and he was like, you have to play it. And I was like, right, okay. I was like, he said we need to play it. So we, yeah, it's it's one of these moments you kind of try to have, you know, you, you know, you turn your back on something that's probably the thing that kind of broke you a little bit, but you kind of know that fans kind of deserve it and want to hear it in some ways. Yeah, is there is there at some point like this energy that drags you down to taking a positive change on the song again? Like, oh my God, here we go again. But at the middle, you see the audience and go like, oh, this is, this is a freaking hit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I asked that once to A-Track, the creative or, of Barbra Streisand of Doxos. Yeah. He, he must be listening to that song everywhere. Like, he, he can even step into a club and, oh, there's A-Track. Let's put Barbra yeah, Streisand. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. going to be happy. Oh my God. It. Yeah. <laughs> But the guy told me like, no, I'm, I'm cool with it. It's a fucking yeah. Good so every time I hear you, it, it's like, yeah, I made that shit. You've got to, you've got to own it. You've got to just, you know, it's 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 part of you somehow. But you've got to, yeah, just own it and 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 play it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, like you know, or, or make a huge amount of money with it, like Royal Waters touring the same album. Exactly. With all, with all due respect, with all due respect. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we're at that level yet. We're not at that, you know. But I, I think, yeah, I think we're we're planning to retake that song and strip it completely new. If we're going out in the road again, there's we're going to kind of reimagine it in some ways, just to kind of keep it fresh for ourselves and fresh for other people, hopefully. So you you must be working on a new album, like 
at, the, at first, how it was for you to having this album ready a year ago, literally a year ago, be ready like for touring it during May or July or something, and yeah, yeah, have to stop it because you knew the world was gonna. Not I don't want to. Yeah, it's gonna. It was gonna <laughs> turn upside down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did how did it feel to delay the album, and how did it feel to have this product in your hands and do nothing about it? Like I have, I have. This, this is good shit, but I cannot tell it to anyone. By paying it there, uh, yeah. I think we just. I suppose it's normal, and I, it probably the length of time that it took is quite crazy. But normally, when you hand in stuff, you've got like minimum. Well. Some some people can turn it around quick. We normally do six months. So you kind of have to sit there and, you know, twiddle your thumbs a bit and do other stuff, like write new stuff. But, like, I suppose a year, it, yeah, it went quite quickly. I think we were meant to put it out in September 2020, and we were like, uh, you know, the, the, London's crazy, England's crazy. Let's put it out in February. Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be like the new awakening, you know. Like it's going to be everybody's going to be out in cafes and restaurants. And then February twelfth came around, the album dropped, and it's like the worst moment. And uh, and like London was like an abandoned kind of dystopia. There was just like it was times when you'd be on a road and you were the only person on on these really busy roads. Um, but like that's it, yeah. You just kind of go, gotta go with it, and it's, you know when you're sitting on it for that long, you just kind of don't care anymore. You're just like, get it out, get you know, give someone the fans, you know, and get stuff moving, and and just write another record, really. And how's the new record? You can tell us about yeah, that. You're in a, you're in a nice studio. You're feeling yeah. with your guitars and your equipment. Are you ready? Are you working on a new album, new EP, new? new, new we've got like yeah, we've got a bunch of ideas like we've got a, a list over there of about uh i don't know if you can see it on that up in that yeah, you can you can give us a, a small there's, tour if you want to. there's uh well i'll, I'll give you a, a i'll give you a this is like it's about, like dave's been djing in here so it's a bit of a it's just vinyl just throwing in the corners yeah. um so, it, so he just like well, oh my god that's a huge collection how many vinyls are there <laughs> that's uh yeah. Do you do you like music, guys? So do you? Are you into music? <laughs> just a bit. I think I kind of had to get it. We had to get it insured, and uh, I was like, "Come on, what are we talking about here?" And he was just like, uh, I don't know. I can't remember what the final figure was, but it's a lot of rare stuff. Um, so we just kind of, I think we stuck a really kind of big figure on it, and hopefully, if it ever, the place ever burns down, then we'll we'll get a huge payout. Um, uh, yeah, and then like he's been DJing a lot for like, you know, like promo stuff. Um, but what he he throw he throws away the vinyls after he's well, he just doesn't really or... like you'll just be stepping on these kind of rare <laughs> two hundred pound records. He's not he just doesn't really treat it that he has he's not a you know he's not one of these guys that like puts it all back and as you can no, see he, like he's a DJ he's into music not into into you know, carrying just, it yeah he, like he's into music com completely abandoned stuff. So, you look like your father in, in his room. Like, look at yeah, him. Look at look, this fucking look shit. Look at this here. freaking mess. Look at this freaking <laughs> mess. <laughs> yeah, totally. Now I just have to, you know, it's been, as I say, it's been 10 or 11 years. You just got to know your limitations. I don't talk to him about cleaning shit up. I just kind of, you know, we, he does it when he does it. And then we just all know. It's, up, it's like being in a weird marriage. <laughs> where you just you know you go with three through. with three more persons yeah you're like he hasn't eaten yet and it's 11 o'clock <laughs> don't talk to him you know like he gets cranky uh you know, with all that <laughs> oh, kind of stuff. oh no he's drinking another beer i don't want him to lose pay during the concert <laughs> exactly get him his bananas and red bull he's gonna faint in a minute you know yeah, what dave, I... <laughs> dave, dave dave always has his bananas and his red bull by the stage and then i think he got he found out the Red Bull was really bad for you, which I was like, "What you didn't know?" Like, um, you know, <laughs> like really? Is it? Is it bad? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he moved on to some like really annoying, you know, juice that was really hard to get. Um, wow, that's why there is. That's why it's annoying. What? What does that? Well, like, like no, just like a, a rare juice that like 
you know, you couldn't really get very easily. I was like, why don't you just stick to the Red Bull and just make everybody's life easier? But um, yeah, we've all got our little quirks. We kind of, you just have to know when to kind of uh, step back and let people get on with it and when to intervene. But that's that's the joy of being in a, a band, I suppose, for like 11 or 12 years. Yeah, you work like a like a team. Like you, you took decision. You take decisions together. I remember the the last time you were you were here when you play at, at El Plaza Condesa, we were hanging out at a salsa club. Remember? Yeah, that was such a cool night. <laughs> we went to uh, a San Luis. Yeah, there was all the uh, the what was it the kind of band that was playing afterwards and everything. Uh, a salsa band. Yeah, um, yeah, it was cool. They dedicated a song for you. They were like. Esta canción, ojitos mentirosos, para la banda de Hango de Hango. Like, he, he didn't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think sounds for you. That's and right. I, remember, I remember Dave being like, guys, um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, we're catching a flight tomorrow. <laughs> and and he, he, had, he had to be the father at that time because it was like 2 a.m. And, and the flight because you were playing at Guadalajara next day. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He had to be the father at that time because you were being the teenagers. He, he wanted to go to bed. That was basically it. <laughs> he and was, we were, we, he's, not in, we, he's not into salsa. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I think he, he just was like, yeah, look, these guys need to be, they need to get to bed. But it's actually he needed to get to bed and we were being dragged out of a really good party. Uh, you know, being pushed into a cab, like a cat being pushed into the, one of those baskets, you know, being taken to the bed. Um, We were like, I don't want to go home. But yeah, it was, and that was a cool night. Like we, I think that was the highlight of the year for us because we'd never been there before. Uh, Mexico City, like all the, we didn't really know what to expect, but all the bars and the restaurants and the whole vibe and the show itself, like the audience were amazing. We, uh, yeah, it's one of these things when you're in London and it's just London every day, you kind of drift back to kind of moments like that where you go, Shit, someday maybe we'll get back to places like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's maybe going to be a long time, but you were talking about, uh, not in this interview, but about getting again that ravey culture of secret parties or uh, maybe like a lot of people won't say publicly that they're going to a, a big place or a lot of people won't feel comfortable with a lot of people in a big place. So there was this possibility about uh, having undergrounds again, like. Oh, right, right. Like just uh, COVID, COVID parties, basically. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't want, I don't want to put it that <laughs> no, no, way. No. No, no, no. <laughs> In Mexico, we call them COVID idiots. But oh, really? uh, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I think. I th it no, but it like in, put, in, in a slow time, like in a slow time, it's going to be like, going to get back from time to time with, like small geeks, like underground things, like not underground as it literally like illegal shit happening. Yeah, yeah. Underground as it undergrounds with uh, less, 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 less amount of people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's going to be probably the reality for a while. Like, I don't know how it's going to work out. It's going to be quite weird. It's going to be like playing at a conference or something, you know, like a Microsoft conference, you know, when you, I think we did play a conference once for like an IT company and it was it, i can imagine that's what it's going to, going to be like everybody really looking confused and about you know at the like end 60, of the track, like 60 yeah, people clapping like yeah like the wedding singer or something like that <laughs> um but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes i mean yeah it's going to be hard to kind of visualize a, a really rammed busy sweaty tent anytime soon but it will happen someday thank god well we hope I heard a rumor of festivals in UK are coming back this year. What you, you yeah, heard about it seems like two two weeks ago. I think everybody got this. I think the vaccine started, and uh, everybody was like, "Turn the taps back on." They were just like, "Get everybody in there, just <laughs> ram them in." Uh, yeah, we'll see what like that. We're I think we're doing we're doing one in uh, on in a surfing town on the south coast, uh, which is quite. It's quite a re it's a really popular like festival for that area, but I have no idea. Like I've no, I, I think it's a lot of booze consumed at it and a lot of craziness. Um, and I think Le there's a, there's two that are quite famous called Leeds and Reading. It's they're really like the kind of teenage, you know, 
kind of almost like a bit of a metal thing mixed with just debauchery, complete madness, and they're going ahead. So I was like, "Wow, that's that's brave." But you know, we'll uh, we'll see how it works. You know, I'd say I'd say hopefully we can make it through to autumn unscathed. Let's let's try it. I'm I'm, I'm with you on I'm with you on that one. Yeah, like, I just saw for for noisy. Um, this have you seen those anecdotes like the one that has a uh, ninja of the Android about Kanye West and Drake and how they hang out together and it was super weird. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen it. Well, Vice and Noisy sometimes they make these kind of weird clips where they have real anecdotes about uh, things. And right. I just saw one about uh, the Mexican Institute of Sound, El Instituto Mexicano del Sonido, talking about the first time Radiohead came here. And it was a fucking mess because was like the, the title of the video is the first and maybe the last time Radiohead was going to be here. So the plane was about to crash. Um, they, they, they looted, they, they looted the band like literally with a machete, like get into the floor and stuff like that. They went into, uh, they went to sleep into, uh, the house of, uh, like a lady, just like a lady that was yelling at them. And uh, they played like a hard rock cafe, but not at the underground concert zone, but at the restaurant. So people were oh, asking oh, oh, oh. for burgers while Radiohead was playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what uh, the guy of the the guy that's telling the anecdote is that at some point in Guadalajara, he kind of listened to them talking about to maybe split. Like, what the fuck just happened? We, we, this Already? only thing just happened when we were in tour and we were starting. Like, uh, have you ever had that moment as a band or as a I would say uh, leading guy of the band uh, during tour or now during pandemics or, or any funny anecdote where you yelled at each other while a plane was crashing and suddenly the plane, the plane didn't crash. I think we, uh, we were, I think we were heading to Glastonbury at like really early days. Glastonbury is like the, what, the biggest festival, like music festival in Europe. If you, if you're not, Maybe, aware, in, but maybe in the fucking world, Vinny. <laughs> maybe in the world, man. It is. It is absolutely. Yeah, it's massive. it's madness. It's madness. Have you been? No, I haven't been because I'm afraid of it. Because there's people that uh, have been there go. told me like like there's a point where you cannot see your band because you have to walk like miles and miles to see your band. The, every the time area... I see a gig there, it's, it's amazing. You play at the park uh, stage, right? Yeah, we play at the park, but like there's the music area, you know, that's like all the bands, but that's just like one eighth of the whole site. It's everything on the fringes is like the world of insanity. It's like you go to this area that um, that's it's like a city. They build like a city and on one of them, there's like a. Uh, this basically it looks like a, a a town that's been hit by a nuclear bomb, and um, there's DJs playing in the and amongst all the kind of ruins, and it's just it, it it's completely mental. Every and then there's just so many. If anybody ever gets a chance, you have to go to Glastonbury. Like I go around, we've played in a lot of places, and you go to like somewhere in Holland. Or in Amsterdam, you know, in, in um, Netherlands, and they say our festivals like Glastonbury, and then you go to it, and you go, it's not like Glastonbury, and you, you know, you go to Coachella, <laughs> you go to Coachella, and they say it's our Glastonbury, and you're like, it's nothing like Glastonbury. It's, no, there's um, nothing because it, it has a lot of story plus. It has like almost what we uh, we played. Years, right? We got we got offered to play the Pyramid Stage at Glastonbury, and our manager which is the main time. stage for, it's the main stage which like, is the main stage know, yeah it's and but we had told our then manager um we only want to play tents late at night you know midnight one o'clock two o'clock in the morning and get like an amazing atmosphere you get like, so, like a yeah like a total like, like people together yeah and just make it like really just quite nuts and uh, so we said look this this summer we want to do the tents we want to do tents late at night so that's the kind of stuff we want to do. So Glastonbury said, pyramid stage, you know, two o'clock, no, two or two thirty in the day. And he was like, Oh, they don't want to do they don't want to do stages. They don't want to do them. They want to do tents. And he passed on the fucking pyramid stage. Fucking and, manager. Uh, I'm just gonna say it loud. Fucking manager. <laughs> fucking manager. And uh 
and then basically our gig booker <laughs> our gig booker came back and said you've really fucked off glastonbury the main the main festival and i was like what do you mean we pissed them off well you turned down the pyramid stage the main stage and now you don't want to do this stage and i was like what the fuck is going on like we passed on the pyramid stage what like this could have been this you could have just basically played the pyramid stage and after the gig shook hands and said we fucking made it do you know what yeah, i mean like course, that's the kind yeah, of that's level a, that's of what, it's an historic stage so we passed that and we got then they got really pissed off with us and they fucked us into like a little uh, another tent um and then as if like the gods were there to destroy us uh we played for like 15 minutes and somebody plugged something into the mains and all the power went out and, and it was like another sound desk and we were like so that had to get they had to reboot the whole fucking tent and then the same person plugged the sound desk in again and it, Why? It was, so did someone, was, someone hated you someone inside no, hated i was you i was just like you know <laughs> why don't you kick me in the balls and tell me my mother's ugly you know this is like this is too much uh, and so we we got we got three power outages we played glastonbury 20 minutes out of an like about 50 minutes set we got we got to play four songs and you know we had all our friends there on the bus and everybody was with it. we had a big fucking entourage for it you know like and they were like yeah, really psyched. they were they were really psyched for us and then we came off stage and it was just like really like you know oh that was that was weird uh i was like yeah that was pretty weird like we turned down the main stage and we got three power outages and played 20 minutes and then we all went just back to the dressing room and it was like it was just shut the door time and you know there wasn't, it wasn't fireworks it was, <laughs> it was just silence it was just like but yeah that was probably our craziest um you know it's not crazy in the sense of m madness but like uh it was one of the kind of uh, frustrating suppose, like kind of frustrating, frustrating kind of moments but you, you know you've got to kind of write those out there you know i'm sure we'll get glass and stage sometime soon the main stage maybe yes. not I, I don't think soon if you want if, if you want to yeah they're never they're never gonna have us back me. <laughs> no maybe they'll forgive you but there, there's someone hating you behind that behind you like the, the, exactly. the french guy who knows about the about the, you don't play in uh, uh, default default and yeah 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 now these like someone you gotta roll with the punches you know just get, get battered <laughs> Uh, is Bad Bunny sounding there? Because Bad Bunny is sounding all over the freaking world, and I'm uh, this may be the dumbest question, but some people ask me about it. Like, what do you think about the sound of Bad Bunny? It's a Bad Bunny, singer. yeah. Who's Bad Bunny? <laughs> Who's Bad Bunny? <laughs> Are you winding me up? No, no, no. He's, he's just a, a really famous guy. I wanted, uh, I wanted to see how far he's gone, but he, he hasn't touched. Uh, England yet, I uh, think. He probably has touched England. I just have no idea who he is. You're, you're in uh, another circle. I'm gonna, you're, proud I'm gonna, be, you're proud to be in another circle, right? <laughs> I, I, we played a, a TV program called Sunday, Sunday Brunch. Yeah. And uh, it was, it's like a famous uh, program over here. And I turned up on the Sunday and asked a guy that I met in the corridor, where's Saturday Morning Kitchen, which is their rival program. <laughs> on another station and the guy that i asked was the host of sunday brunch oh and he had, he had invited idea. us on and he, i was like do you know where saturday morning kitchen is he said you know it's you're you know this is sunday brunch and i was like oh yeah and he was like and i'm the host no he didn't say that i appeared on set and it was him standing with his apron ready to start cooking and i was like oh my god and what have you're, like, you're like a cartoon beanie like like you have these incidents that you don't want to have that are not your fault but suddenly they're happening and you're it's, just you in know, the middle of a mess it's, it's just django django like that's what it is it's from one calamity to the next <laughs> oh my oh my oh my oh my uh it was a like a fake documentary made by of course you know the guy charlie brooker the creator of uh, Black, uh, Black Mirror, Mirror. Yeah. and well, in England, he's well known for uh, Newly Wipe. And he, yeah. he did this uh, 
uh, like a fake mockumentary called Dead to 2020. Have you, have you seen it? No. It has, for, it was interesting for me because as it, as, as it, because it's made by English people. It has the point of view of the pandemics by uh, people of England. And I mm. didn't knew without uh, wanting to offend you that you have a crazy, also have a crazy uh, leading guy with a um, weird uh, hair uh, taking, taking decisions. I'm talking about Boris. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the client. You you want to get into politics or you want to skip that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Like yeah, the I'm, funny thing is, like uh, during this pandemic, I I get to see world leaders like uh, our Mexican president. Well, well, he's not a world leader, but he he's a leader of one of the uh, biggest countries. Uh, uh, I saw you know Trump like having these weird uh, thoughts, like thinking like that. Yeah, it's okay, COVID. It's okay. You can shake people's mm -hmm. hand and you can be away and don't wear a mask Thank and stuff. You. Drink bleach and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's, yeah. Gonna, it's gonna be it's fine. Gonna be fine. Yeah. Yesterday I was at the hospital kissing kissing people hands with COVID, yeah. and nothing happened to me. And the funny fact is that the three of them got the COVID. So yeah, it was really uh, bizarre for me to to see that in other realities in Europe you have like almost the same guy. What do you think about Boris Johnson and his decisions? I mean, he's like a kind of terrifying clown. Um, you know, he acts the clown, but actually underneath it all is a kind of, uh, it's more like, is it the movie It, you know, Stephen King <laughs> kind of like there's, it's a, yeah. I mean, I think the whole, that whole party of people that he's involved with, um, are just, they're just savage, you know, like they're just really, they don't, they just don't care about normal people they're all very very super um you know they're from aristocracy most of them they all went to eat the best schools they went to this school called eaton or harrow and you yeah, have to wear like a little too. little a little boating hat and you have to wear these little you know uh, bow tie and black suit and you walk around looking like you're kind of punting on a canal <laughs> that's what they wear that's what they wore every day how like can, a how huge can boy you, scout like it's <laughs> like, like a weird like yeah like a really weird boy, boy scout and that's what they that's where they come from they they don't they don't understand normal life they don't understand the cost of things you know i think he went i think he went on a holiday you know went in the middle of or last christmas and it was like he got a friend who was like a some oligarch, you know, gave him his place in a compound that was worth 30 grand over Christmas, you know, or 40 grand. It was like all like, but then he kind of says, oh, we, you know, we're all in this together. You know, the NHS, the people who like all the nurses and doctors, he, I think he gave them a pay raise of three pounds 50 a week this week, like three pounds 50 a week. Um, yeah, it's, it's a kind of weird he works on the he works on the operation that he is a clown and he's really cuddly. He's like a big teddy bear, but underneath it all, it's a really dark. Uh, there's a really like there's a, a really dark, dark under. <laughs> yeah, there's a really dark. If you open the back up of that teddy bear, it's just like you know, there's just really evil tattoos in there. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah, don't get me started on him. I'm, he's not my he's not my don't he's even, not my guy. Don't even trip. I just wanted to see like the the the. Like to match how weird it is to have these same three guys. I mean, not anymore in the U.S. with, with Biden going away, but man, it's, it's some weird shit. Yeah, I've got friends calling me up from places, going, "What the?" You know, I've got a mate in Australia. He goes, "What the hell's going on with you guys?" And I'm like, "Is this really bad?" And he was like, "Yeah." Like we're looking from Australia and New Zealand, and we're thinking, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, <laughs> you know, like we're just. Uh, outsiders must just be looking on horrified you know but that's that's where we are that's who we kind of voted in yeah, it's the same thing like don't even feel bad it's like a pearl as i was, as yeah, I was yeah. saying <laughs> yeah talking, talking about trump you some some fan asked me him, to... him on the other hand he's great no oh he's a wow <laughs> he's a super nice yeah, guy love that hair 
he doesn't he doesn't have any complex at all he's not a racist no no he's just like the no. most positive asshole of all yeah times. like <laughs> yeah i think everybody yeah. sighed a good sigh of relief there well somebody asked, said. <laughs> somebody asked the like the, the dumb but funny question like would you work with kanye west like if you're hanging out at your studio and you would get this phone call from kanye's office and he's like because kanye radiohead again i'm not a, i'm not a fan of radiohead but i heard that he wanted to see radiohead on a backstage and radiohead went like you on glastonbury like no oh uh, really <laughs> Just, no, uh, it's definitely. not gonna happen bro it's not gonna happen uh, bro. thank you but w w would you do it just for the fun of it. Kanye you... is never going to call us. Let's be completely honest about it. He's never. never who, <laughs> who's topping up your beer? <laughs> who the fuck? You did every time you pick up a beer. It's like filled up. <laughs> have you, are you in a bar that you're just getting served drink? No, I just have, I, you know, you have mine, those vinyls. Mine's on the floor. ran out. Mine's ran out. And I, you know. You, have, you to, have vinyls have on go... the floor. I have, a, I have a six pack. So I can keep All it right. here. Like, I, might, I may not have pants, but I have a fucking six pack here. And I'm ready to use it during this interview. <laughs> You've got a, like a beer top that you just like push it against. <laughs> It's a barrel. It's a barrel. Uh, it's just a tiny barrel. Like, all right, okay. So a, uh, very good. <laughs> uh, what we're talking about, Kanye West is never going to call us. Yeah, yeah the worst fact, scenario where Kanye calls In us. fact, if Kanye West, like, appeared at our door, I would, like, I would think somebody had probably spiked my drink or something. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, if he wants to come along, more the, mer the more the merrier. You know, we'll get him kind of doing something over the top of, uh, I don't know, going in the dark. And also the the obligated uh, Latin American question: Would you like to work with uh, with someone from Latin America? I've seen you work with uh, with uh, well a couple of, a couple of women like Anna Pryor is playing drums in in Marble Skies. Which, yeah, uh, she's an amazing drummer. I heard I heard a rumor that she played the songs that song because David wasn't fast enough for the pace of the song. Is that is that true? Wow. Um, I couldn't say. I can't. I'm gonna plead the fifth on that. Nah. Yeah. I think. Well, I, think she, she, I mean, he would be the first to admit that she's a much better drummer. Um, you know, she's like, yeah. And it was. I think we. I think we originally got her along because Dave. Yeah, Dave was away. I heard about Dave that. Was, Dave was yeah, away. Dave was injured or he was away or something. And we, we just kind of wanted to get mo going on stuff. And, you know, obviously we're on the same label, Metronomy and us. And we've, we've, we supported Metronomy when on the English Riviera tour. So we got to know them really well. And, uh, yeah, so we just kind of called her up. She's obviously an amazing drummer and can play anything so we were like do you want to come along you know a couple of days into the studio so she came along and then he tried to try to do the beat that she'd come up with and was like this is not happening this is i can't do i can't do it so we were like i was like i think we were actually recording it in a proper recording studio and i was like anna, anna are you uh, are you going? are you are you, are you where are you <laughs> are you nearby get down here uh so yeah i called her up and um she came down and laid down some drum tracks but she's you know she's just like a machine you know she just she's an amazing she's got amazing flair and uh patterns and stuff and yeah it was quite it was it was actually just really nice just being able to switch it up because it's a totally different style to maybe than we than we would play and some just getting collaborations with people it is something that's quite exciting to us we got like Charlotte Gainsborough and for this album. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you about that. You have Which, Charlotte Gainsborough now. You, you in, yeah. uh, in Marble Skies you have um, Anna and uh, uh, we had Rebecca Taylor from she was in a band called Slow Club which yeah. were um, yeah, they were they were they were pretty big and then and Self Esteem. She's called Self Esteem now. I suppose it's you, it's that's the kind of thing it's just when you're listening to, listening to an album, having another vocal on a track can really snap you out of like, if you're hearing the same vocal all the time, you know, even for me, like it can get like a little bit, you need a, you need a refresher. Um, 
What are you going to say? Uh, yeah, my, my, my point kind of was that I heard some uh, lyrics on the new album that you can hear like it's kind of like Portuguese or maybe like Spanish. I, I haven't catched them well yet because my vinyl that literally glows in the dark, which is super fun that you had the idea that the glowing on the dark vinyl glows in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't received it yet, but um, it, it has this, uh, this uh, like Latin vibe during this track. So the obligated question as a Mexican, maybe also journalist, without offending uh, my fellow real journalists, would you like to work with a Latin American uh, woman, you know, someone like Natalia Lafourcade or, or someone like a new um, coming artist or? Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's, uh, there's a guy called Milton. I don't know if he's still alive. Do you ever hear that guy? He's like, he was a huge Beatles fan. Let me, I'm just going to Google Milton. Uh, uh, Brazil. He was, yeah, he's, I'm, I'm into quite a lot of, yeah, he's called Milton. Nasimo, Nas, him in the Milton world. Nascimento. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he's you, cool. You, is he still alive? Why, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is still alive. Hey, you still on time, man. You, you, yeah. you need to get that vaccine for him and, and, and work get him with over. him. He's, he's, he's 78. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something that, that kind of worries me about, like, no joking. I just want to see some of the old bands tour. The other day I was watching a Brian Ferry a Brian Ferry live set in Glastonbury, and I was thinking, oh, shit, he probably never tour again. He's risking his life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe like you won't see the Stones again. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll die while touring. You don't want that. A Mexican clown just died. His name was Cepillin. I don't, we don't want more people dying. It's like a medieval kind of jousting. It's got into that level where if they come out onto the road, they can actually, they can pass on to the other, the other side quite easily. Like a, like a Mad Max shit, like you're risking yeah. it every time you go out. Yeah, but yeah, Milton's cool, and um, I got, I'm into quite a lot of Tropicalia stuff, like from you know the '70s, like Brazilian stuff, and um, yeah, it's like that when we wrote that song, that it had that vibe, you know, that kind of. You could almost kind of see a bit of a bleached out beat scene in the seventies. You know, kids like jumping and off the rocks and people having beers. Like when we were writing it, we were like, oh, "This sounds quite." A, it sounds like this image I've got in my head. And um, Dave was like, "Oh, we should do a Portuguese verse," which we thought would be really easy. But we got uh, a London girl whose parents are Portuguese, so she's got a really like, "All right, mate." you know, kind of like, it's like Cockney Portuguese. So she yeah, kind yeah, of, she did, all, she did all the lyrics for us. And then... She won't say Milton Nascimento. She will say no, Milton Nascimento. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just like that. And uh, we got, then we got like this monkey drum player, uh, like a kuka drum player along. And he, we played the lyrics to, to him and he's from like North Brazil. And he was just like, I have no idea what she's saying. This is completely, whatever she's saying, it's just, I have no idea. So he wrote the lyrics. <laughs> he, he wrote, rewrote the lyrics. And then I've got a mate who's from Belfast, who's fluent uh, Portuguese, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, and he came along and he was like, I could help you with those lyrics. And I was like, I don't need another fucking weird accent, you know, on this thing. Everybody, all I need, somebody from like Lisbon. You know, just somebody. next time call me. I'm I'm into Spanish. Or if you want to call Anna Pryor again, I think she's living yeah. In she's so she's, she's gonna, living in, she's living in Lisbon. Yeah. Like just make her part of Yango Yango. Like you know, I'll do at least part of Bell City Sound System and Hot Cheap. You can you can you can have both. <laughs> We've already got one ginger. We can't have two. You know, <laughs> is there a hit? She's like redhead. A, Dave's Dave's redhead. There's too there's much. Hot vibe. There's a hot vibe. There'll be, there would be like a there be a ginger off. <laughs> A yeah. ginger off. <laughs> Who's the most ginger? <laughs> Two hotheads in the room. And they both yeah. play drums. No, 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 no. That's yeah. not, that's no bueno, my friend. No, that's not bueno, yeah. my friend. No. Well, exactly. Yeah. Next time you need like if you uh, Spanish lyrics or something, let me know if you. And, and I'm I gonna will pass you some uh, some woman recommendations from, from some Mexican artists that I really I highly recommend. I know that they would love to work with you guys. Right. Should future. yeah stick stick them over. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll do it. But and one of the last questions: you you got a lot of remix uh, of your songs. Last the last one I checked is by Hot Chip. Um, how 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 do you get that? You get a phone like from Joe from Hot Chip or Alexis from Hot Chip, 
and they told you like we're gonna make a remix because we love your song or you send the guys the song and be like hey guys wanna wanna mix this or how does that remix cool to work because i can see I, a lot of huge bands making remix make, making remixes of a lot of uh, huge bands as well I, yeah i think we've been trying to get a remix out of them for like 10 years like the entirety of our uh you know being together <laughs> and they go no no not doing it no not doing it and then i think with this one We were like, you gotta do it. You just gotta it would, do it. It would um, be so amazing that a manager in the middle would be like, sorry, these guys are not making remixes right now. No. <laughs> they yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> they're like bobbing us off again. But no, they, like, they, I think, like, weirdly, one of the guys, um, what, which one? it's the keyboardist. Um, uh, Owen Clark. Oh, Owen, Owen, yeah. Owen has a studio just like upstairs. He might actually be up directly above us. Like, um, coaching, like Owen. yeah, well, yeah, he's he's painting up there, so we might be. Uh, he's painting. got paint, he's got a painting <laughs> studio. You freaking artists, like you, you, I know, you. I know. He uh, he still manages to like look better th at us than us at the best times. He he turns up in a like a berry and this cool coat and these kind of trench boots, you know, like, and I'm like, you're just coming to paint, but you look like you're walking out onto like and a movie set. You know, he's he's a cool guy. And but he uh, dances anyway, like a motherfucker. Have you seen yeah, he him dance like, during yeah. while he plays? It's just hypnotic. Like if you ever yeah. get bored of hot chips music, which is never gonna happen, you just turn to the guy and he's like working out, like making steps, yeah. like vanilla he's, ice movements. He's the king of the of the double breasted suit. He's <laughs> and, and, so, and big shoulder pads. You know, he's, he's, he's he does a lot of one handed synth playing, and uh, the shoulders going. It's very yeah. He's he's great to watch live. Yeah, so he's got we. A, So he, he uh, yeah, they, I think they passed it around themselves. They, like, you know, somebody did a few chords and somebody did a beat. So I bumped into him. I didn't really know how it had all happened. But, um, yeah, I bumped into him, like, two weeks ago when he kind of told me the backstory that it, they were all into the song and um, they all kind of shared it amongst each other and kind of collaborated collaborated from afar. So, yeah, it was cool. We, we managed finally to get a Hot Chip remix out of them, which was, which was a bonus. Um, you released now three videos of your new album, am I right? Glowing in the Dark Spirals. Uh, and Gravity. And Gravity, which the one with the, with the alien all around. With the, the alien, yeah. You have a new single preparing to be out. What's, what's a new video? Uh, uh, we've, got, we've, got two, um, we've got two videos which we're kind of working on. Uh, one for Waking Up. Um, I think Charlotte Gainsbourg, she's doing, she's shooting a new program or a new movie, so she wasn't available. Um, but uh, that and Kicking Out the Devil. Showing the front door, I'm gonna kick the devil. Which I'm gonna play a a dev a devil devil like slob uh that, you're gonna that be dressed goes, as a devil for kick the I'm devil gonna, out I, yeah and i'm gonna be going around somebody's house and just making myself really unwelcome and just messing their what is messing their house up it's i'm into that song now that you're talking about it i'm that's that's probably my favorite song of the album like oh, really? the doorbell at the start reminds me of the book of mormons who's like, oh hello yeah, there yeah yeah like i, I don't know people if, think that's me talking and i'm like uh, who, who's that guy who, who is I, mean, like, oh, was my, i think my mom said oh you're you're i like the way you ring that doorbell at the beginning and say hello there and i'm like that i'm your son you do you know my voice like that's not me i thought it sounded more like martin short than uh and who is it you know then but yeah who is it oh we just we found it online I think we found we went <laughs> digging we went on the internet wormhole looking for doorbell sounds um and came and stumbled across that one i think there was i think we tried recording a few but it just sounded like it sounded crap so uh, um, really you're that obsessive to be like mm, that's not my doorbell like like the guy in, in yeah you know what's the, the the drummer movie what's the name uh, uh, uh not, not quite my tempo not quite my uh, tempo yeah yeah what's the we name? tried uh, loads. whiplash we tr Whiplash, yeah. like that's not, not quite my bird doll, not quite my bird doll. Yeah, we tried doorbell. hundreds of, not thousands of doorbells, and none were right. And uh, then we just settled like, for uh, an internet sample. 
and you know? that wasn't what would work. And the song is about it, it kind of works for like being inside of a house during COVID, during pandemics, which is like you can treat it to I know Eddie Vedder says that once art is out, it, it gets to an interpretation of whoever watches it. But it's like having your own devils at your house or having a devil at your house. Like everyone has been, I think, through pandemics, uh, through that shit. You, you, what was the thing of the song? You were just um, walking I think around. Like Jim a- mumbled. I think he came up with the early like like vocal melody and he kind of just mumbled kicking out the devil and Dave was like what did you just say like I don't know and he was like did you just say kicking out the devil I don't know <laughs> and he was like well why don't we just stick with kick, you know kicking out the devil because that sounds pretty good that's often how we work we play shit and we have these like moments of genius and somebody says what did you just play did I play something like <laughs> it's like it's like am- amnesia mixed with like dementia you know, uh, and all this amazing stuff is just being lost. That's the way we record everything, just because we can't remember what we're doing. So but, you um, said like, like, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Like, it, it was just it. I think it's, and then we just made it into a little story about um, an unwelcome visitor kind of turning up at your house and making your life hell. Uh, wow, the it sounds so 2020. It sounds so 2020 oh, to me. Exactly. Like a tiny, tiny bacteria. It was a tiny... <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm glad I didn't write it because if, you know, if one of our partners hears it, they're going to think, is that me? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, am I the devil? But, um, <laughs> but yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's, it should be fun. It should be quite fun to play live and it will test my acting skills to the max. Let's oh. let's see. You're you're pretty cool at videos. I must say, like, I, like yeah, glasses well, and stuff yeah. and walking, and shit. And, I'm and a good then. slob. I can do, <laughs> I can do the, I can do the slob thing pretty well. Nah, you also have the rocker movements, like you know the classic ones, like jank, 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 jank. You know, you know it. Yeah. You, you know it. You know, like like the rockstar stuff. Like a quick question uh, during the pandemic, I was thinking about my, my myself being crazy. I was because I didn't have shows. I was like. What would I do if I wasn't a stand-up comedian? What would I do? What would I do? And like a dream job in my mind was to be a waiter, which was a dumb fuck at the time because restaurants were also closed. Uh, what, did you have like, or do you still have like a work now during the pandemics you'd see like you would have if you were in the position of being in a huge independent band like Yango Yango that it doesn't have to worry about uh, count bills like other indie bands that are starting uh, have to uh is there something i would do um yeah yeah just just speak it like i was an architect i was an architect but i was a terrible architect uh i was like i think i was going out so much and like partying so much that i i would turn up and and like we would i would make a model for like a building and forget to add two or three stories on the top and then take it to like the local council and they would be like, there's not enough, you know, this is completely wrong. Like what you're showing to me. And I'd be like, Oh yeah, I I really shouldn't have played that gig at like 2 AM last night. I should be, you know, I should like, so yeah, I I went to that, to that rave where I almost passed out about music. (laughs) Yeah. I should, you know, turn up to a Monday morning business meeting and just being like your eyes kind of rolling around in your head independently from each other. Yeah, so I knew that wasn't. I knew it wasn't for me. That was one. I suppose that's the opposite. I I knew that what I couldn't do, even though I'd kind of studied for it, and um, it it just takes a certain kind of brain to do that job, you know, to draw to be that detailed. And I'm not that person. Um, no. Yeah, I I don't know what else I could do really. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I just broke your head like. Yeah, that's it. You <laughs> like, destroy your... <laughs> you're really. I'll be. That'll be me for the rest of the night. You know. Yeah, but at, at, as corny as it sounds, um, you were born to be a musician. I've I've seen some interviews where you said that you were bad at school because you were always thinking about your. Uh, I will say it in a respective way. A shitty band you have when you were 14 that was part of a, <laughs> like a tournament of bands, but you then you got 
uh, kicked out and they didn't give you gave you beer because you were 14 years yeah like they since would... that time you you kind of knew you wanted to make music right yeah i i suppose i was slightly embarrassed about the band you know name because we were living in hackney at the time and every every second person you met at a party what do you do i'm in a band what do you do i'm in a band and you and then it became almost a parody everybody was in a band and uh you're out everybody's trying to out band each other you know they're wearing like the most you know like crazy gear uh so i at, at the time i was a bit like uh i just you know me and dave were doing stuff and uh yeah i just kind of didn't get fully into it until i think somebody pulled me aside and was just like you either need to you know what's the term uh <laughs> shit or get off the pot <laughs> like, you know you just need to do it and like believe in it or just don't do it uh you know you kind of just need to you know if you don't believe nobody else will believe so you gotta like put yourself into it so yeah i kind of i kind of just had to kind of go with it and and push it that was yeah, that sorry. was early on yeah Yeah, that was just the last question I was about to ask you because it was from a, a, a musician's perspective, which by the name in Instagram is Diego Costa, like the fucking football player. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the the question was, how can I grow my audience in this new music industry? Like he's like a new musician, and maybe that's a good tip. Uh, we always end up this podcast like in a corny way, like in a corny. Uh, Uh, inspiration shit to give the people that, that see us or listen to us like oh this guy's fucking right and he made it so what would uh, you be your advice during that as a musician and maybe as a as a working person during the pandemic because i know you're obsessive you i've seen your videos i've seen your concerts uh, i've seen how you pick doorbells for the first seconds of your song you're you're obsessive what what the advice I, would be I, I would say don't wait around for anybody to come and give you anything. You've got to, you know, don't wait for a record label. Don't wait for a video director. You've just got to own it yourself and try to, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't want to put out your record and you feel your music's good enough, like when you get like a hundred records pressed or Do you, you know, it's just about like, I suppose we, we were, we went to our college, so we were quite DIY in the early days. We would just do all the videos ourselves. We would, uh, edit them, edit themselves, ourselves, uh, record it ourselves. We didn't know what we were doing, but we went to the shop and bought a couple of cheap mics and we just figured it out as we went along. So, so don't, don't kind of have a kind of, try to have a visual for your band or your act or your solo thing that kind of marries up with your music and and just try to do as much of it as you can and uh yeah that's probably the the most also make your music good if you can uh because that's going to be you know if you if like if you just try to pour yourself into the music and maybe don't get lost and you see a lot of acts here like it's all fashion but like no music or You've got to have that kind of core musical integrity. You've got to think about it. This is your leg legacy. And this is like what, you know, hopefully if you can kind of manage to stick around, this is what you'll be remembered for. And you want people to kind of think, oh, they were good, you know, uh, in 20 years time or whatever. And it doesn't matter the amount of, of people, right? They, as long as you're losing the pyramid stage to play like five yeah. songs and during that you, moment. You yeah. Know. you. You got to play the the fifty, you know, the twenty people like you're playing the four hundred, and like always. make it, you know, always you've got to. Uh, there are some of the, mo the the most hilarious shows. Like we played in uh, Aberdeen in this bar. I don't think anybody knew who we were. Literally nobody, and it was like, like it just there was like a weird kinetic between twenty people. It was like one of the best nights I've ever had because there was you know they were at the end they were really doing all these mad moves and hanging off stuff and jumping on stuff. And it's just about connecting like that is, is good. So just get out and play. Don't hide behind a laptop either. 
just try to get out and do some shows and work. You know, you don't have to be great on your first show. You'll probably be. We were shit on our first shows. It just takes time. Um, so yeah, that maybe like that's probably what we went through, and that's maybe what I would say. Yeah, you started at uh, your drummer's bedroom, and now you have your own studio. Yeah, yeah, we started. We you know I had to wake him up with a cornetto every day and try to you know bring him you know coffee and try to wake him up and. That was the art. That was the you're life. A dad. You're just I'm, a dad. I'm you're just a dad, dad. Vinny. You're well, just a fucking dad. <laughs> well, when you're standing outside in the fucking cold for two hours, you know, like, <laughs> you know, when the guys, you know, Dave's not woken up, you've got to, you know, you're either going to go home and do nothing or you're going to try to make something. Um, why you didn't went home? I'm sorry for interrupting. Why you didn't went home during those times? Because maybe someone could say like, nah, I'll drink my, this coffee myself and fuck this guy. Because I, I wrote songs in my bedroom for like, since I was 11 and I just thought I'm, I'm either going to do something with it or I'm just going to sack it off. Like I can't, you know, I can't keep writing songs in my bedroom and just hiding behind it all. Like I've got, I think some of them are okay. And, but if I don't get something out, even just like, uh, like, you know, a track, you drop a digital track or a seven inch or, you know, you're just going to go crazy. Uh, and kind of drive yourself crazy. So I, I think we were both driven by that fact that, like, just do a couple of singles and then we've we've made it. We can just move on. And then it just kind of kept snowballing from there. So uh, that's probably the reason. I, I, you know, and I had two cornettos, and you know, one needed to be eaten by somebody else other than me. So, uh, <laughs> like, literally, the ice cream cornetto. They're, like. they're, they're melting, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's my tips. It's like, makes sense. just follow whatever you like. It doesn't even matter if it's music or whatever. If you, if you have a passion for it, you just follow it, right? Yeah, and don't, and just don't wait, because don't wait around for anybody, because they might not like, come. There's, there's this video director who's telling me that next year he will find a label and there you're, wait, you're wasting yeah. your time, right? And then you get people who come along and try to basically make you do something completely different from what you're already doing. And you got to be wary of those people as well. You've got to, you know, hopefully if you're doing something good, you've got to stick to your guns and really uh, not, you know, be careful who you take advice from. Well, I just have to say thank you. Thanks again for your time. Like you're, you've always been amazing. Uh, your band is amazing. Uh, congratulations on your almost 10 years. Um, I'll be delighted to help you uh, put out some publicity for that digital concert because I'm really excited to see it. And ah, sweet. I'll, I'll record it. I, I won't tell you, but I'll record it to have it as a, own, as a personal DVD. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> just personal, no, no distribution, no distribution. You're not going to sell them down a market? No, no, no. I'm yeah. just going to sell it to my heart and that's it. All uh, right, sweet. <laughs> uh, cheers again. That. Oh, great. Again. Good to see you. Good to see Good you again. To, I hope to see you in Mexico. hope to win to, to go to a salsa bar again. And uh, I'm going to say it again. I was having this eight-mile moment before the interview. I was so nervous because just listening to your music and then get, getting the chance to meet you is it's awesome because this new album is just crazy. It's just like listening to lots of bands in one album. And I just have to thank you for your art. Thanks for your art because it's, uh, it's Richie, beautiful. Cheers. The videos and the music. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers. Yeah, uh, by the way, I have a Very new kind. Album. Very here. kind. And I'm going to have to get a refill. <laughs> Good to see you. We'll see you. We'll see you over there sometime. Yeah, you, I'll see you in Mexico or I'll, or I'll visit you there. But I uh, hope to catch you uh, here soon, which will mean that you're touring an awesome album. So great. Thanks again for your time and okay. good luck with going in the dark. Gracias. Adios. See you All right. Bye. Bye.